<laughs> well, let's see, so about the summer, uh, obviously, I'm very much looking forward to coming back here. I've been coming to Door County for the festival, I think for about 10 years now, so it, uh, it's always great to get back and uh, see old friends and work with the orchestra and work with Victor, who's really one of my favorite people to collaborate with. So we've been discussing, I guess, various options um, for this summer, and when this Bernstein program came about, I was thrilled uh, that they decided to go in this direction, because the Bernstein Serenade is a piece that I haven't done a lot, but uh, but I've done it every season for the last few seasons, and, and every time I do it, I, I keep thinking to myself, I have to really try to find more opportunities to do this piece, because it doesn't come around all that often. It's very challenging for the orchestra, uh, and it's somewhat of an unusual piece to program. It, uh, it's just strings and harp and lots of percussion. Uh, so it's, it's great fun to play, it's great fun to listen to, and uh, I think that it really embodies a lot of what makes Bernstein such a unique character. It's one of these pieces that is, uh, in certain places it sounds very popular, sort of the Leonard Bernstein of the uh, West Side Story or Candide Overture, but then there are other aspects that are, that are much more uh, serious, like his serious symphonic literature. And I think Bernstein was such an interesting character because it, it seems, I wish I could have known him, I never did know him, but uh, it seems like he had so many sides within him of, on the one hand, wanting to be the most popular guy in the room, wanted to be everybody's best friend and man of the people, and on the other hand, being an uber intellectual and wanting to be the smartest guy in the room. And uh, I think that that's the sort of thing that uh, comes through through different pieces of his. He has his pieces that are, that are very uh, intellectual, very erudite, and then he has his pieces that are really for, for the masses and good old Lenny Bernstein. And I think that this piece has both sides of that, and I think it makes it uh, really fascinating to listen to because it, it's one of those pieces that I think you can feel um, uplifted by a, a fun piece of music to listen to but also feel in a way like you've uh, experienced something educational and important. So it's uh, hopefully something that the Door County audience is really going to enjoy. Well, the, the serenade for, for violin and orchestra is uh, based on themes from uh, Plato's Symposium, and there's some debate as to uh, the chicken and the egg of this situation, uh, whether he really was, as he wrote, whether he was really just inspired by reading through uh, the story and, and writing the music. A lot of people apparently think that he wrote a good deal of the music and sort of fit it to this story, but it's very funny. the uh, the preface to the score is it's so wonderfully typically Bernstein in that it's so totally unbelievable in the way that he writes that he was just one day just breezing through again you know rereading re some uh, some Plato and just thought that this was just such a charming little story I think well it the symposium is not a particularly difficult thing to read, but it's not something that someone just happens to be breezing through on a, on a summer day. So I think that was maybe Bernstein's uh, hyper-intellectual side, trying to uh, convince everyone of uh, what an intellectual he, he was. And of course he was. But uh, in any case, whether he really wrote the music as a reflection upon symposium, or whether he had a lot of ideas and thought that it might be an interesting way to link them with some sort of a literary connection. It's really of no consequence, but it, it is interesting to think of, um, of aspects of the, of the dialogue uh, and how one might fit them into, uh, into the music. And there are certainly certain things that seem like very, um, very direct relationships between things that happen in the story and things that happen in the music. But on the other hand, it's not at all the type of piece where you need to have some understanding of the Plato to appreciate the music. So I, I don't think it's required reading for anyone that comes to the concert, but it is, uh, it is fun and it's, uh, it's an amazing piece of writing. So uh, if people do want to read it, that's great. <laughs>
Well, I think Bernstein must have been an amazing person to know. Um, the stories are absolutely over the top, and he was clearly such a brilliant person and such a, uh, a multifaceted talent. I think really he's uh, he's one of the more fascinating people out of music for the last uh, last century or so. Yeah, it seems that Bernstein's influence as a as a teacher and uh, just as a, an ambassador, really, for, for music is something that is felt very strongly by today's generation and hopefully it'll continue to be that way because a lot of what he did was meticulously recorded and preserved. So, yeah, he was a special, a special communicator in that sense and, and it is amazing how many, uh, particularly conductors uh, nowadays, received some encouragement, some guidance uh, from Leonard Bernstein. So I think it, well, it's going to be great to, uh, to play this with Victor since he had such a, a close connection with Bernstein. I remember playing the uh, Shostakovich first violin concerto with Victor a number of years ago where before the first rehearsal, before I played a note of it in front of him, he told me about how this score uh, in manuscript was sitting on his piano when he was a child. Uh, because uh, and he, Victor, knew the piece before it was published. Wow. Because it was uh, written for David Oistrakh, the violinist, and Victor's father, Vladimir, was David Oistrakh's pianist. So uh, that, was, that was just a little intimidating before the first rehearsal, <laughs> having, wow. having the conductor say, oh yeah, I've known this piece since I was four. I knew it before. I knew it while there were probably only five people in the world that knew it. An amazing thing. Oh yeah. Oh, it's amazing that um, a lot of uh, a lot of classical music is so far away from us, but a lot of it is surprisingly close. I mean, it's not hard to to meet people who knew Shostakovich, or right. of course Leonard Bernstein. I mean, he was with us until so so relatively recently. Well, it's uh, time is a funny thing. Things that can seem so distant. I mean, there are lots of people who knew people who knew Brahms. So it's not that far away. Um, and it's incredible. <laughs> oh, I think the music making that goes on at, at PMF is uh, really top notch. There are such wonderful players from all over. Maybe it's a bit of a, of a hidden treasure, but it, there are a lot of people around that, that know of it, because I think anyone who experiences it a little is um, is kind of overwhelmed by uh, by what's going on here uh, it makes a lot of sense really when you think about it I mean it, it's got great history it's got a great conductor at the head uh, it's in one of the most beautiful places you could ever be I mean, up in Door County here it's just incredible um, the working conditions are a lot of fun people uh, the orchestra always seems that everyone it's such a close-knit community. People get along so well, enjoy being around one another. Um, it's not surprising to me that, uh, that it has been so successful and I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful model for, for festivals all over. It's, for me it's just uh, I think a really fortunate thing for me that I've been, uh, I've been able to become sort of a part of the family and I hope that I hope it continues to go that way.